Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Netus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our series called Labs. You'll find this playlist on my YouTube channel. In previous videos, we talked about urine chloride, urine uric acid, urine cortisol. We talked about beta-2 microglobulin, lactate dehydrogenase, and lactic acid. We talked about methemoglobin and the famous Benz Jones proteins. Today, let's talk about urine ketone bodies. What are the ketone bodies that you know? Acetone, acetoacetic acid, beta-hydroxybutyric acid. Notice these are acids. Hey, medicosis. Do we normally see urine ketones? No, normally there should be no ketone bodies in your urine. But when we see them, this could be a sign of a disease. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. And if you want to know the biochemistry behind ketone bodies and ketogenesis versus ketogenolysis, please refer to my biochemistry playlist, where we talked about carbohydrate metabolism, fat metabolism, and protein metabolism. The most important question in metabolism is, are we in the feeding state or the fasting state? If we are in the feeding state, it's the insulin land. If we are in the fasting state, it's glucagon land. Insulin world, in the feeding state, when I eat, I need to build up stuff. So amino acids acids will be built up into proteins, glucose will become glycogen, free fatty acids will become triglycerides. But in the fasting state or starving state, it's the opposite. It's catabolic. I need to break down the big stuff into small stuff to give me some readily available sources of energy, otherwise I will starve. So you break down proteins into amino acids, you break down glycogen into glucose, and you break down triglycerides into free fatty acids. And when you do this, you release ketone bodies. Translation. You only see ketone bodies in the glucagon land, not in the insulin land. So can starvation lead to ketosis? Yes. Anorexia? Yes. Very severe illness? Oh, that's also catabolic. So yes. How about lack of insulin? If I do not have insulin, I will go by definition to the glucagon land. That's the only game in town. And I will have ketones. That's why one of the causes of ketoacidosis is diabetes. We call it diabetic ketoacidosis. When there is no insulin, we shift to the glucagon world, which has ketone bodies. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Here is an overview of metabolism. Carbohydrates, proteins, or fat. All of them will end up as acetylcholine. That's the queen at the crossroad. She's the sun around which the planets revolve. Acetyl-CoA is the source of ketone bodies, and ketone bodies can become acetyl-CoA, the center Piece. You'll see ketone bodies when you break down fat in lipolysis and beta oxidation, which is degradation of fatty acids, i.e. you only see ketone bodies in the fasting state, not the feeding state, in the glucagon world, not the insulin world. Ketone bodies can give you energy. They will give you 4 kilocalories per gram, which is equal to carbohydrates, proteins, but less than fat, which gives you 9 kilocalories per gram. Anytime I break down the fat, such as the fat in my belly, what's going to happen? Triglycerides become glycerol and free fatty acid. Degradation of fatty acids will give me ketone bodies. Ketone bodies come from acyl-CoA and they can become acyl-CoA. For me to make ketone bodies, I gotta be in the glucagon world. But insulin inhibits ketosis. Very important. That's why patients who have no insulin, like patients with type 1 diabetes, cannot inhibit ketosis. Therefore, they end up with too many ketone bodies. They can show up in the blood, ketonemia, and in the urine, ketonuria. What are these ketone bodies again? Acetone, acetoacetic acid, beta-hydroxybutyric acid. Ketone bodies are here. I have good news, I have bad news. Good news, ketone bodies can become acyl-CoA, enters into the TCA cycle to give you energy. Bad news, these are acetone, acetoacetic acid, beta-hydroxybutyric acid. These are acids that can lead to metabolic acidosis with high anion gap. And one of the things that acidosis does is that it inhibits neurotransmission. That's why if you see patients with diabetic ketoacidosis, you might find them confused, altered mental status, altered state of consciousness, obtunded, or even comatose. Ketone bodies only exist in the glucagon world when I am fasting or starving or having diabetic ketoacidosis because I lack insulin. Who makes ketone bodies for you? The liver. Does the liver make ketone bodies for himself? No, the liver is very altruistic. 
that it will make the ketone bodies but will not use them. Instead, it will give them to other tissues that can use those ketone bodies via ketogenolysis. And these tissues include heart, skeletal muscles, kidney, cortex, and brain only during prolonged starvation. Otherwise, the brain prefers glucose. Where did ketone bodies come from? From acetyl-CoA, the queen, the centerpiece, the sun around which everything revolves. For me to make ketone bodies, I gotta be in the glucagon world, fasting or starving. Catabolism, not anabolism. Insulin inhibits ketogenesis, but glucagon approves this message. Where did the ketone bodies come from? They came from acetyl-CoA, which came from what? From the beta oxidation, the degradation, the burning of fatty acids, which came from triacylglycerol or triglycerides. Ketones are the products of fat catabolism, and you only break down the fat when you are in the fasting state. The three ketone bodies again, acetone, acetoacetic acid, beta hydroxybutyric acid. Acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate can provide you with energy. Acetone does not provide you with energy, but it provides your doctor with a clue. It has a fruity breath odor that is very characteristic and tells your doctor, you know what? Maybe this patient has ketosis. Maybe we need to ask some questions. Maybe we need to run some tests. Maybe this patient is having diabetic ketoacidosis. Maybe this patient has diabetes type one and does not know it. That's the significance of acetone. It is clinically significant, not physiologically significant. That's tweetable right there. In ketogenolysis, you can burn these ketone bodies and get some energy. That's the good news. Bad news, they can lead to acidosis. Look at this. When beta-hydroxybutyrate is becoming acetoacetate, this increases NADH. Yes, this is a source of energy. But when you increase the NADH to NAD ratio, this will favor the production of lactic acid. That's another acid that can lead to more acidosis. And that's why patients with diabetic ketoacidosis, too many ketone bodies, can have what also? Lactic acidosis. It makes sense if you understand biochemistry. Medicosis, you told us that the liver is altruistic. The liver makes ketone bodies but cannot utilize them. Why not? Why can't the liver utilize them? Because the liver lacks the thiophorase enzyme, aka succinyl-CoA acetoacetate transferase enzyme, which is important for ketogenolysis. So the liver cannot perform this ketogenolysis. The liver can perform ketogenesis, the formation of ketone bodies, but the actual utilization of them? Mm -mm. Normally, what's the function of insulin? Insulin pushes glucose to your cell, usually skeletal muscle or adipose tissue. But it does not just push glucose. It pushes amino acids and free fatty acids and potassium and phosphate towards the cell and away from the blood. Insulin pushes the fat to the cell and away from the blood. But what if I have type 1 diabetes and I have no insulin? Then no one is gonna push the fat into the cell. The doofus glucagon, the enemy of insulin, will do the opposite, will break down the fat into fatty acids and glycerol. And when you burn the fatty acids, what do you get? Acetyl-CoA, which can become ketone bodies. In type 1 diabetes, there is no insulin. Oh, oh, insulin is the major anti-ketogenic hormone. But with no insulin, what do you think I'll get? Ketosis. Ketosis in diabetes equals diabetic ketoacidosis because these ketones are acids. But in patients with type 2 diabetes, they do have insulin. It's just not very good at working, especially on the GLUT4. Since they do have insulin, they do have some anti-ketogenic activity. So there is usually no ketosis. So they do not develop diabetic ketoacidosis. Instead, they develop hyperglycemic, hyperosmotic, non-ketotic syndrome. No ketosis? Yes, because insulin is there. Of course, in real life, it's not that cut and dry. It's not that type 1 always gets DKA and type 2 gets this one. In real life, there is an overlap. In real life, it's complicated. Medicosis. Normally, you said that there should be no ketone bodies in the urine. Yes, that's normal. Okay, tell me about the abnormal or the causes of ketone bodies in the urine. Well, first of all, all of these have to do with what? Catabolic state, starvation state, the land of not insulin, but glucagon, cortisol, epinephrine, and thyroid hormone. Examples, diabetic ketoacidosis. Insulin is lacking, so I shift to the other land. Alcoholic ketoacidosis. Alcohol metabolism produces tons of acetyl-CoA, which can become ketone bodies. Moreover, many alcoholic patients forget to eat. They get their energy from alcohol, 
and they forget to eat. They say, oh, who cares? And when you're not eating, you're not in the insulin land, you are in the glucagon land. Next, all the conditions of negative nitrogen balance, such as starvation, anorexia, weight reduction diet, low carb diet, or high protein, low carb diet, all of them, to a certain extent, can put me in the land of ketosis. Severe illness or febrile illness, that's a catabolic state. Too much fever breaks down your proteins. It's denaturation. When you're breaking down stuff, it's catabolic. It's the land of catabolism. Thyroid hormone, oh, that's that's in the same glucagon family. So hyperthyroidism. If you've watched my video on urine cortisol, I've also told you that hyperthyroidism is associated with hypercortisolism. It's all in the same catabolic family, the same anti-insulin family. Medicine makes so much sense sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Glycogen storage disease. If I cannot break down glycogen, carbs, into energy, of course I gotta switch to fat. And when you break down fat, what do you get? Ketosis. Aspirin lowers glucose. If you cannot utilize carbs, you will shift to fat. And when glucose goes down, glucagon goes up. And glucagon is anti-insulin. Glucagon will break down fat. Anesthetics for many, 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 many different reasons. You can think of it as like, it's similar to severe illness. Many of these patients are sick. Many of these medications alter my biochemistry, put me in the catabolic state, and many other causes. Do you want to learn more about diabetic ketoacidosis and alcoholic ketoacidosis? And what's the deal with this NADH to NADH? AD ratio, then download my acid base imbalance course at medicosisperfectionaries.com. It will also teach you about HAGMA, NAGMA, metabolic alkalosis, base excess, base deficit, a smaller gap, anion gap, you name it. Ketoacidosis inhibits nerve transmission. You know what else is not good for my brain? Strokes. You can learn about ischemic strokes, hemorrhagic strokes, myocardial infarctions, many arrhythmias, and other topics by downloading Emergency Medicine High Yields course on my website, medicosisperfectionaries.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionaries, where medicine makes perfect sense.